Hi, this is Jyoti here. Welcome to Jopat Tech Guru. In today's session, I'm going to discuss regarding serialization in C-sharp. This is one of the important topic with respect to interview aspect also. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get the notifications of my new videos. Let us start the discussion of serialization. So what exactly the serialization is all about? Serialization is the process of converting an object into a stream of bytes to store the object to or transmit it to memory, a database or a file. So its main purpose is to save the state of the object in order to be able to recreate it when needed. So the reverse process we call it as deserialization. So whenever you want to convert the particular object into different ways. So first of all, you are converting it into bytes. So the bytes, you can store it in again, different ways. So wherein either you can store it in the files or in the database or in the memory. So in case of this deserialization process, we are just trying to recreate the entire thing this is entirely the reverse process of your serialization the way the conversion of object to bytes to different storage area so we are just trying to extract it from that particular data itself whatever the converted data is there again there is i formatter one of the built-in interface which will be useful whenever you want to store the data so this is one of the standard pictorial representation, which is going to tell you like objects are getting converted to bytes and bytes are getting stored in either in the database or in the memory or in the file. So the object is serialized to a stream that carries the data. So the stream may also have information about the object's type, such as its version, culture and assembly name. From that stream, the object can be stored in a database, a file or a memory. So whatever the information you want to store it, again, ultimately it is getting converted into bytes. Those bytes are getting stored in different ways. So then what are the uses of serialization? So serialization allows the developer to save the state of an object and recreate it as needed providing storage of objects as well as data exchange. So whenever you want to pass the data, you can pass the data in varieties of ways. So it is very helpful for the developer, wherein you can save the state of the object and you can just recreate it whenever you require. So through serialization, a developer can perform actions such as sending the object to a remote application by using a web service, passing an object from one domain to another, passing an object through a firewall as a JSON or XML string, maintaining security or user-specific information across the applications. <clears throat> so there are different types binary serialization, XML serialization, as well as JSON serialization. Let us see the illustration with respect to this in a Visual Studio. Let me create a simple console application. I'm creating a simple console application. So my targeting framework is 4.7.2. Okay. I have already got a program here. So what exactly we are trying to do? First of all, the namespaces which are important for serialization is 
system dot runtime dot serialization and system dot runtime dot serialization dot formatters dot binary as we are trying to convert the data into the binary serialization format. So whenever you are going to create a class, make sure that you are giving the serializable attribute. Otherwise, it is going to give you an error. As you are trying to convert the data in terms of bytes, serializable attribute is very important. So this is a class. This indicates that a class can be serialized. This class cannot be inherited. So first of all, this particular data can be converted into bytes, but you cannot inherit this particular class. So currently we have got two properties, ID and name. One is integer and second is string. So in the main, we are going to create the class object. So whatever the ID is there, I'm storing the value. Whatever name is there, I'm storing the value as .NET. So now we are using one of the built-in interface called as iFormatter. Again, it is a part of system.runtime.serialization. So this provides a functionality for formatting the serialized objects. So we want to convert into the binary formatter. So binary formatter is again a class. So we are just creating the object of this binary formatter inside this formatter, which is again concerned with the I formatter. Now with the help of the string, I want to create a particular file. If the particular file is path is given properly, you are opening it in the create mode and you want to write something inside this particular file. So now, as you are using one of the built-in functionality called as serialize. So whatever the file you have given here, the objects you are copying it to this particular path. So let me just give a demo folder because I'm having a demo folder in my system. So now as per the formatter.serialize is there, whatever the particular file name is there that appears here and whatever the object is there, the entire ID and name, both are getting serialized and getting stored. It is always better to close the strings. Now, with the help of the stream, you are going to create, again, same thing. Again, you are going to give the path. But here, this time, earlier you have created and written it. Now, you are opening it and reading it. Now, after this opening and reading, if you want the particular data to get converted, whatever the data is there, that you are storing it here. And whatever the data is there, that you are trying to convert it here. So deserialization is one of the standard functionality wherein whatever the stream you have given it, whatever the content is there within this particular file is getting converted to, converted to again the original data. So that's why you are going to create the object of my class and you are again typecasting it to my class. Later on, you want to print the ID and name. So let us see, first of all, the serialization. Let me execute the program. We have not given any acknowledgement as such, so nothing is going to get displayed. So let us go to the C drive and uh, demo folder. And inside this, I'm having example new file.txt. As you can see that the datas are getting stored in a binary way. So these are not in a readable format. So these particular data need to be converted into the particular type which we want. See, some of the informations are just coming in a pieces, pieces bit. So you cannot uh, recognize what is the exact content. So for this purpose, again, we are doing this deserialization. So for this deserialization, we are writing this particular code wherein we are typecasting the entire deserialized data so that here id and name we want to print it fine so we have given console dot write line id is and name is now we can see that the particular data which is there in the binary format 
is getting converted to the original data using this deserialize method. So uh, object i formatter dot deserialize into bracket string. This is the standard syntax. The same way you have to give it. So what it does, it deserializes the data on the provided stream and reconstitutes the graph of the objects. So what it returns, the top object of the deserialized graph. But again, I don't want that particular graph format. I want it as per my class is concerned. So that's why this typecasting is very, very necessary. If you are removing this, you can just observe that. Whatever the data you are going to send it, it is going to show you an error because the return type do not match with this particular object. So this particular data need to be converted to this my class. Then only it is going to give you the particular data. So here you are having ID and name. ID is and name is. So let us see that. Whatever the binary information is there, we are trying to deserialize it. So you can see that ID is and name is which we have written. But this ID one and dot net is coming from my particular file, which is called as example new dot txt. If the file is there, it is going to it is going to copy it. If the file is not there, it is going to create and write it. And as per this particular file is there, it is going to open and read from the particular file. So your file mode and file access, both are very, very important. So this is all about your serialization. Hope everybody has understood the serialization concept and how the data is getting converted to serialized way and deserialized way using the binary serialization. I have shown you the practical implementation. If you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it. Click on the bell icon to get the notifications of my new videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. Thank you.